And here on the table, I have the two side gears and the clutch packs. I would like to measure the clutch pack that was uh, in this rear end uh, originally. And we can do that by, of course, using the special Ford tool that's used to uh, make that measurement. Uh, it's not really needed. What you can do is simply take your clutch pack, the whole thing, including the shim, and understand there may be some models may have two shims in the, uh, in the uh, pack. Take a small C-clamp, just like this, put it across there, and then squeeze it down. This C-clamp is kind of simulating that S-spring that's in the uh, traction lock assembly. Then take a caliper and measure right across the whole pack and shim and take a measurement. And I'm getting about 635 thousandths of an inch. All right, that's a little bit loose. The normal spec using this method is about 640 to 645 thousandths of an inch in a normal stock setup for a traction lock. Now for high performance use, I want to go a little bit thicker. And as a matter of fact, most of the later model kits or some of them are pre-measured. And when I use this method to measure them, I find that many of them are about 655 thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to strive toward that thickness. I can go a little bit thicker, but understand I can't go too thick. If I get too thick, the gears will be so close together that I won't be able to put the spider gear pin down between the axle shafts. So, so there is a limit to how thick I can go. Also, I'm going to use the newer style plates. You can see the newer plates have this rounded tab. The older plates, mainly from the 80s, have these square tabs. You really can't get this style anymore. The uh, newer plates have this rounded tab, and they're a little bit thicker too. So you can't uh, just simply put a set in and use the same shim as you did before. You may find that uh, your measurement is not gonna come out exactly right. One other thing we can take a look at is the layout of these clutches. Notice the way this one was set up. You had the gear, you had a fiber, and a steel, another steel, a fiber, two steels again, a fiber, and then the shim. Now in the 80s, you may see that fairly uh, often. That's a kind of a common layout for traction lock uh, systems that are in cars in particular in the 80s. Once you get into the 90s, that is not normally what you'll find. Instead, you'll usually find the steel shim or steel plate first, then a fiber, then two steels, like that, a fiber, one steel, a fiber, and the shim. And there's a good reason why that is the normal layout for anything that's on newer rear ends. All right, here's where the concern is. I'll take the clutch pack off and we take a look at the gear. We look at the surface area where the uh, fiber was riding. In fact, this is the fiber that was against the gear. And if you look closely, it may be difficult to see in the video, but if you look at the outer edge, you can see that about 10% uh, of that uh, clutch fiber was not touching anything. So you did not have full contact with the gear. If you look at some of the newer type gears, this one came from a late 90s uh, F-Series truck, and that contact area is smaller yet. In fact, I have a plate from uh, one that was installed in a truck where the plate was against the gear, and you can see that maybe 40% of the outer edge of the disc was not in contact. That's why on a late model um, traction lock assembly, and I would say even the earlier model ones, it's best to orient it so you have the gear, then a steel plate, then a fiber, then two steel plates, a fiber, a steel, a fiber, and then the shim. And uh, this is a good argument not to go with the four fiber uh, setup. A very popular trick for the hot rodders, use four fiber plates. They figure you have more contact area, you're gonna have more traction lock action. But you're forced into having one of the uh, fiber plates are gonna be next to the gear where you're gonna have that contact area problem. 
Uh, so therefore, I think the way to go is to go with three plates, and if you want to have more traction lock action, simply set your clearance pack up a little bit to the thick side.